Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, we welcome to the final uh, weekday of our African International Mediation Week. Uh, we are together in this uh, launch event uh, where we will be uh, working together on the business development and uh, strategy for the 2020 uh, conference. Uh, we begin this uh, particular session uh, with the words of the Kenyan National Anthem recited in English. O oh God of all creation, bless this our land and nation. Justice be our shield and defender. May we dwell in unity, peace and liberty. Plenty be found within our borders. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome uh, once again. In this uh, particular uh, session on the fourth day of December uh, 2020, the 9 to 10 a.m. Uh, session, we will be looking at uh, developing a protocol uh, together as a screening tools and assessment guides that uh, cover the areas of uh, special needs, the area of uh, addiction, the area of uh, family violence, uh, mental health, as well as uh, online mediation. Uh, we will uh, have this session uh, by way of uh, open uh, discussion. And uh, to just uh, commence us, uh, we will have uh, a short uh, presentation uh, sharing the online uh, mediation uh, uh, experience and uh, some strategies uh, from the Western part of the continent. Good morning. Uh, Morinike. Good morning, Sarah, and thank you for having me. So I'm just going to try and share my screen. Oh my, okay, one second. While I, while I'm sorry, I think I'm getting something wrong there somewhere. Okay. Just going to try and share my screen, but as I do that, I'll just try to start. So thank you. So I'm going to be talking to us about the kind of things that we ought to look at. I'm sorry, I seem to be having some challenge with finding what I should have on my screen. I had it open just now. <laughs> One second. I think I had too many things open. Okay, so that's it now. Okay, so I'm just going to be sharing with us what we should determine if we have to move a matter online. So because there are different types of disputes and of course different disputes are suited for different, um, different um, stuff. So that's it. So when we look at um, online, when we talk about online mediation or whether we want to move a dispute online and to determine the protocols, we have to look at not only the dispute, but the parties. We need to take into consideration, and we will get to that in a few minutes once I share what I have as my draft. So we have to determine whether the dispute and of course the parties can move their mediation online. So we need to address the concerns of the parties and uh, the ICODR video mediation guidelines will help us because online mediation is not only about uh, just getting on Zoom because we all believe that um, we are all very familiar with uh, the platform now and understand what it needs. But we need to understand the needs of the parties in the mediation because we have to be able to engage with the parties in a way that the benefits of mediation are not lost because we have moved from face to face to online mediation. So whether it's a video call we want to use as in Zoom, whether it's a dedicated ODR platform like Modron or Quack, and we have all of those on our, on our websites on ODR Africa, which is a combination of chats, asynchronous communications, synchronous chats, mails, video and audio recordings, synchronous video calls like you do in Zoom, or ex even exchange of files, collaborating real-time on documents sharing and writing. 
all of these things are moving mediation online. So online mediation, when you think about it, it's not only about just having a Zoom call. That's what I'm trying to emphasize. And we need to take into consideration, just like you can see on my screen that I'm sharing, accessibility. And this is the ICOGR video mediation guidelines. ICOGR is the International Council for Online Dispute Resolution. It's a world body comprising of um, fellows and members from all over the world. And I happen to be on the board of that council. Now, so we have fellows from all over the world coming together to put this best practice together. So you have to confirm that, as I said, the individual is willing to use the technology for the reason and for the session. So they, they have to understand that you have to confirm that both the participants, and it's not about one because you have to, you know, in mediation, we always talk about balance, power balance and power imbalance. We must, even using online tech, uh, online um, mediation, even doing online mediation, we must understand that balance and be able to clear that so that one party does not have any advantage over the other and is not, or the other party is disadvantaged because he or she is not technologically savvy or technologically literate. Because you have to ensure that both have good bandwidth, add that is clear, lighting is clear, they have a place, a safe place where they can actually um, communicate. And re if you recall when the um, CRT, I think it was Sharon, when she made her presentation, she explained that sometimes they now even had people, they created a place where people could come to, people who didn't have access to computers. So all of those things are the things we, we have to look at before we do intakes for online mediation, before we believe, because as mediators, we don't want to lose the essence of mediation. So we want to be sure that whatever for software we're using, whether it's Zoom or whether it's a chat, whether even if it's WhatsApp, that it is competent, that means it is adequate for what we want. We have to be sure it is confidential. We have to be sure that the mediator can remain partial and neutral before, during, and even after the session. And there's so many things that can happen because if, for instance, one party is cut off and you are alone with the other party, then it just creates an atmosphere like there's some advantage or that you have been partial. And of course, we have to be sure that the site is secure because we all know that mediation is confidential. So I'm going to stop sharing this and then I'm going to just take us right straight into what I have, which we will then all look at together. So I'm going to start to share what I have as a draft and then we will all do that together. One second, I think I have. I had it open, so I'll just open that now. Open. Yeah, that's it. So I'll start to share again. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so what I have here, and please jump in. Feel free to jump in. We're at that um, stage now. What I have here is the first draft, and uh, as Wangari and Sarah had said, what we want to do is to produce something together. So I just gave us that background so that it will explain to us what we're trying to, what we ought to look for while trying to get that intake, the kind of questions. And that was just to raise um, questions and open up our thoughts, that kind of things. So I have there, of course, you have to take the party's name, address, telephone number, and email. And the reason why the telephone number is important, even though you, you want to tell me, well, why do you need a telephone number? Why do you need an email? Because we're online. It's because sometimes you actually have um, a, a, a break in transmission. You can have, um, so before you even start, you want to have other ways to communicate with the parties so that even if the parties are in the mediation and for one reason or the other, there is a break in bandwidth or internet access for one party. There are other ways to communicate. And of course, the mediation session cannot continue with one person offline. So, and then it's also important to ask if the person is using a public or private computer, because that would also determine whether you believe that the matter, all the parties are suited to move their mediations online, because someone who does not have access 
to um, a private computer, remember that mediation is a confidential process. So you want to also ask if the parties have access to uninterrupted and continuous internet. That is very important because if you are moving a mediation online, you want to be sure that that party can stay with you online. Then are you and the respondent, because remember that mediation is not about just one party, it's about both parties collaborating and finding that interest that they need. So are the, the respondent, the applicants and the respondent familiar with basic computer use? Are they familiar, are able to communicate via text online? As I said, online mediation is not restricted to just a video call. There could be asynchronous, synchronous chat messages. There could be exchange of recorded um, audio and video files. There could be so many things that can go on. It's all online, all part of the online mediation process. And even when you use the dedicated ODR platforms like Quirk and Modron, as I had said, you still have to be able to communicate via text apart from the video communication. So do you want to minimize, and then these are the kind of things that you want to ask, because some people have concerns and you ought to be able to address those concerns. And some people will say, well, despite that you, you are suggesting um, online mediation, that they'll rather wait and have a face-to-face. -face. And so the kind of things you want to look at when you look at the dispute is, you, is minimizing costs in settling the dispute, especially where the dispute is of such a low value or whether the parties are in different locations completely. And I have that at, at the bottom. Because where, you, where the, the dispute is of a low value, the parties are in different geographical jurisdictions. Then even the issue of the ju juridical, um, the jurisdiction of the individual territory, you know, courts are very territorial, will come into play. And so that can also give you the, the um, impetus or give the parties, sorry, the impetus to want to have the mediation online. So the, the issue of the jurisdiction of the courts will not even be um, in, in contention. And of course, do the parties have an existing relationship? And this is very um, dicey because we will see that in some certain types of disputes, you would actually, it would actually be better to go online. If parties, for instance, even though they have a relationship, it's become so strained, they don't even want to be anywhere near each other or where it's, then it's actually important to have face-to-face, -face, then of course you would not screen that kind of dispute for online mediation. But where parties, where the relationship is so strained and maybe like in a divorce matter and the parties have become so antagonistic that the other party is afraid that he will be hit or they could actually, actually get into fist cuffs, then it's actually better to screen that kind of, uh, so, whether there's an existing relationship between the parties or not, will can go either way. So the yes or no that would have actually should birth more questions. So is there a passive threat or fear in the presence of the other party? I talked about that. Are they in the same city, state, or country? Does the dispute have international flavor? Because if it does, then the online mediation is to take advantage that's an advantage of ODR that we're able to cross borders and have disputes resolved without the traveling. So it will reduce the cost, it will reduce time because if you also have to do a face-to-face, -face, we have to think of um, the convenience and the scheduling. And that's why the issue of, do you want this dispute to be resolved speedily? Because it's easier for me to agree to a schedule because it takes out my travel time it takes out uh, being, blocking off a whole day of travel to the place and all of that. So I'm able to get that, parties are able to schedule that faster. So is it a family conflict and emotions likely to run high? Do parties feel comfortable interacting orally or in person rather than textual discussions? So you need to, under, you need to understand that the parties want to remain anonymous. For things like e-commerce um, disputes, Parties really don't, they, they are not interested in the interpersonal relationships. They just want, I bought something 
I didn't get the color I wanted. I want my money back or I want um, a replacement, something like that. Do you think there might be a need for expertise or a mediator out of town? Because if, if you think there's a need for a mediator out of town, then it's, all, it's also better that you go online because that way you can get a team of mediators from all over the world if you wanted to. So do you think parties will prefer self-paced responses rather than real-time conversation? And what I mean by this is that self-paced could mean asynchronous, so I can drop my message. Sometimes the advantage to that is that you allow the other party reflect other than when you are in a face-to-face -face meeting and I have to respond. And sometimes I don't, I just respond without thinking too deep about it. But if it is um, self-paced, I can come back to it. So it gives me time to cool off. It gives me time to think about it. And it also gives me time to probably give a better response or no response at all. So now I think I can allow other people come in and add to the things that I've said. Hello, Sarah, can you hear me? Um, yes. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Morinike, for being able to just uh, share with us uh, some of the things that uh, we need to think about when uh, considering uh, online mediation. And I'll just uh, open uh, the floor to any of the participants who has any queries or comments uh, concerning some of the things that have been raised uh, to think about in terms of uh, online mediation. Yes, Kipsang. Yeah, good morning. Um, thank you, Morenike from, from Lagos <laughs> for doing that morning exposure to us on um, this on ODR. So my question um, relates to the issue of, of uh, whether the parties have continuous and reliable internet and um, because we know that most of the time power can go off anytime and sometimes because i'm a lawyer i see sometimes you are submitting and the judge has hung i mean frozen so um how have you been how has been your your experience in uh, resolving those issues because you, somebody can be talking and you are just talking to the screen and the other person has hung and they looked like, especially where they had not put a video and they had just put their name or they had just put a photograph. Yeah. Do you want me to answer each question or you want me to, do you want to take more questions? Should I just answer that immediately? Uh, let's take uh, two or three and then you can uh, handle them together. Uh, Wangare, your hand is up. Yes, uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Morenike. And um, uh, so that said, uh, uh, I, I wish to inquire whether on this, uh, <clears throat> this, this form of ours that we are now co-creating uh, together, it would be useful to add uh, uh, an, an inquiry on the specific device being used. And I'm saying this um, especially because uh, for most of the times, it's probably let's say like a phone. You know, when someone now says it's it's a Nokia 1962, then probably Nokia 1962. You know that this one uh, or the device they they let's like actually um, have with them. So I think it could it would be useful. And 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 when saying that, it can actually be because the devices it's either a phone, so they're probably under devices. It can be let's say devices, and then there's uh, the phone, a uh, uh, computer. Probably it's it's, a, it's you know Mac Mac 1962 or it's a HP and then tablet ta or tablet and then there can be let's say like other um, under that yeah then it can help the 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 the, the, the mediator to know whether they will be able to call, connect or like drop offs or or something of the sort yeah so thank you uh, thank you for that. Um, uh, uh, Kipsang, you have something to say again? Yes, proceed. 
Yes, I have a young mediator next to me here, Joki. She just took the course the other day, so she has a question. Welcome, Joki. Thank you. Good morning to you all. My name is Njoki. Uh, my question is, uh, in when you're doing uh, the physical mediation, you come up with guidelines as to how a party should not leave, just walk out. So how do you ensure this does not happen in online mediation? I mean, a party can just click end and the call. <laughs> yeah, just, <laughs> so that's my question. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Njoki. <laughs> Very interesting question. Maybe I should start from the last one. And um, that's one of the disadvantages actually of um, online dispute resolution because the parties you really can't control. You know, it's easier when someone is in the room with you and you can try and appeal to that person not to leave. So really the only way we do that is to build trust online. And when I say build trust online, is that at the pre-session before you even have the mediation session, you would have explained clearly to the parties what it is that you, you are all getting into. And there would have been an agreement to mediate. And those are those little protocols, sometimes as little as, you know, when we do face-to-face -face mediations, we talk about turning off your phones and talk about not um, being insultive. So those are the kind of things that you also do when you want to start a magician online. Because um, a lot of times you find out that people and and it would, that would take me to um, Wangari's um, um, comment or questions or addition about the device. You find out that people sometimes are just ghosting. The first thing with them, um, you want me to stop sharing? Um, yes, it's okay. Okay, let me do that then. So the first thing that you, the, the first thing that you do while preparing for the online mediation is to explain to the parties that in online mediation, you have to see the parties, especially when you agree to a video mediation. You have to see the parties because if you don't, then you are not sure one that it's the party that is the only person in the room. You're also not sure that you, act, you actually have the person's attention. So that's very, important and so by the time you stop seeing that person then of course you know that the person has worked out on you so there's really no way other than the trust and the agreement of the parties before the session that they will sit in on the session there's no way you can lock a room because even if you lock the room it doesn't if you lock for instance a zoom call it doesn't allow other people to come in but it doesn't stop whoever is there leaving their screen. For instance, there's no way you can compel me to stay in front of my screen. But I just hold it as a courtesy because I've also agreed. Because before you go for online mediation, there's an agreement to mediate. There are terms that parties would have signed on to. So that way they know what is it. And then the issue of um, the specific device. Yes, that will be useful. but from experience, it's better to use a computer because if you use a phone, a phone has limited features, even with Zoom and so with so many other ODR platforms. So it's actually easier to use a computer and to say, always show your name. It has to because the name also helps the mediator and all the other parties recognize who is speaking because you know it's not a face to face thing. And so it's just a way, just like we can all see our names now, you would always be able to recognize who is speaking at different times and who you are addressing. And then whether the parties have reliable or internet um, or whether the internet freezes. What we advise when you do online mediation is that you have a, you always have a backup. So you have a backup um, internet service provider. And so, and that's why the issue of telephone that I mentioned and the onset and other ways to connect, that's where it comes in. Because we all have the same challenges, even in Nigeria. Sometimes when I have to do a mediation or when I have to do an arbitration, I have up to two, three, 
internet service. I have my regular office. I have my phone as a backup that I can use as a hotspot. And then I also then have another one if I think it's something that is so important because sometimes you have all of them not working. And when a party freezes, that's part of what you have you would have discussed. What you do is to stop the mediation and let everybody else come back together once you notice that. And don't forget that when we relay messages over the internet, there's like a lag. So it's for some people, depending on the bandwidth, so you really must take that into cognizance. And that's why I said, moving your mediation online, it's not just about sitting in front of a Zoom um, platform and talking. There's so many things that you ought to learn and that must be learned and taken into cognizance before you start doing it, if you want to do it properly. So I hope I've been able to answer um, the three questions that are coming now. Sarah, am I good? Uh, yes, Morenike, thank you very much. Uh, we'll just take uh, perhaps the last question comment uh, from uh, Rotich. Uh, before we move on to the next uh, area. Uh, Ratich, did you have a comment or question? Please proceed. Okay. okay, good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Bernard, how are you? Okay, fine, thank you. I wanted to ask Morenike uh, to highlight on how one or an organization dealing with mediation can be able to join ICODR. Thank you. Sorry, what do you mean by ICODR? International Council of Online Dispute oh, Resolution, okay. that body. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. well, it's- um, yeah, How can one be a member to- You can to actually body. be a member of ICODR. If you go to the website, it's icodr.org, icodr.org. You can actually join and become a member of the International Council of Online Dispute Resolution. It's, a, it's an association. And what we do really is to put together best practices among between practitioners all over the world to see how to develop protocols. So there are protocols on online arbitration, online mediation, ethics. The protocols on all of that, so you can you you can go to the I, I put the it's icodr.org. Just Google icodr, you you would see there, and you can join. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Morinike. So we will move to the same uh, the next area, uh, which is the area of uh, uh, special needs. Uh, and and uh, perhaps what we may do is, uh, I will just read out the different areas and then we can be able to uh, indicate, uh, you know, things that we need to think about or questions that we need to ask. And you can say which area you think they uh, are most appropriate for. So we are looking at uh, the areas of, uh, you know, special needs. We're looking at the area of addiction the area of uh, family, violence, uh, fa family violence, as well as the area of mental health. So what are some of the considerations that uh, we need to have as mediators? And uh, again, it is an open discussion, so you may be able to uh, make your suggestions uh, and just indicate where you think, uh, which particular area you think it falls in. Um, Sarah, kindly, if I may uh, uh, put in a, a word. So, uh, colleagues, just, uh, for this particular session, what we are doing is that uh, we are developing or co-creating, working together to develop tools that we can hand over, we can pass on to mediation centers or even to mediators, so that when you are on what is called intake, when you're taking in a, a, a case or a matter, what is that one form? Uh, a form that you can have that you can use to make a checklist. Like for instance, uh, so Morenika had uh, worked on um, the, the <clears throat> um, online mediation, um, ODR, 
And so we have a one form that just asks a number of questions that help you, or if you're running a mediation center, to know if that particular case is a case that is uh, that is good or that a case that can actually be uh, go through uh, online mediation or now look for ways of how it can be done in a physical in a physical way. Um, as mediators, we and uh, we, we we encounter different uh, kinds of people. We have people who have special needs. We uh, know that um, uh, issues to do with addiction and family violence could have an influence on uh, a mediation. Probably the person does not show up uh, when you set up a mediation because uh, they just don't show up. You you're just thinking, okay, now this one has refused to come, so I'm going to now just tell the court that this person has refused to show up, and so the court can now you know, deal, deal with the person. But probably there are some inquiries that if um, asked, then would help to appreciate or understand this person is dealing with also something else. Then as a mediator, because um, especially if you've been part of our, our evening sessions, we are learning that mediators, uh, compassion is, is, is actually the key driver for you to be able to do this work and to do it well. Because the, the, the person, when they come with one issue, there's probably a multiple of um, others. You're not necessarily trying to be converted to a counselor, but it's being able to look at the person wholesome. So the question that we now have uh, is we have these other, the other four areas and what are questions or that probably let's say even five questions if, or, or observations. You know, probably I could let's say like start off and say, uh, if uh, if I see that the, uh, someone has an injury, then that's a red flag too. That could be a red flag. That probably uh, okay. The, if it's a family matter, that there could be like a, fa a you know, family violence um, as part of it. So here also we are checking: Would we be having any persons who are experts in this field who are on this call? And you can just tell us off the yeah off your head. We will be summarizing all this as we create that one pager. We may, yeah, but your comments, open comments are invited. Thank you. Sorry, sorry, sir. Maybe, sorry, maybe you should put the, um, the different headings up again so that we can, so that, we can, so that we're reminded about the three, three other areas that might help be on the chat or on the screen. Okay. Now, are we giving the quest? Are we giving the questions that you would ask, or what exactly are we doing? Uh, yes, please. Uh, oh, sorry, we are thinking late. about. Mm. We are thinking about what questions we need to ask. So uh, those are some of the things that we are bringing up. And are we going in any order, or do I just no. suggest for whichever? It's, it, from wherever you have, you know, uh, something pops up, please mm. just uh, go on to. Okay. So I think uh, Sarah, for <clears throat> for this conversation, I think I've I've, I've, I've say I've, I have highlighted I've, I've highlighted like for example, if there is someone has an injury that's visible, like you know, uh, they are on the face, they have a cut, or you know, or the hand is bandaged and it has a sling. So that 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 could indicate that can actually fall in two sides. The, I think uh, uh, the area of uh, family violence and also on addiction. Yeah, probably yeah. Could be an, an addiction could be in any area. It could be yeah. It could be uh, yeah in any area. Yeah. Then maybe also in family, we could also know, want to know about the communication or the relationship. Okay. And the communication. How their communication is like you know how do they go about communication you know and then this also goes to mental health because if i'm not feeling accepted in the family maybe i'm told words that will make me discouraged that is a form of abuse so it could be <clears throat> verbal which again that affects mental health it could be physical it still goes to mental health so when you are when you are dealing with a person you want to know the family background what is going on in the family what, how are the relationship between the members? Depending on who you are with, you need to know how do you relate with this? How, how does each person relate with the other person in the family? And those that are directly connected to you, how do you relate with them? How do you communicate with them? For example, when is the last time you talked to so-and-so, you know? And how is the talking? So that 
is there friction? Is the communication piece, I mean, well, I'm, I'm makeable, do they communicate well, things like that? And who communicates to who in the family? Because sometimes you might find that the cup, if the couple is not together, they might use children or even other people and instead of facing the problem and addressing the problem. That's just a thought. I'm not sure if that's what you are doing. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, yes uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sabina. So, you know, trying to find out about uh, the communication, which is okay. Uh, perhaps that is a little bit in depth. Uh, what we're looking at is, you know, just at the onset, how can you as a mediator be able to detect if there is, you know, a red flag uh, concerning addiction, if there is a concern, you know, perhaps uh, with regards to, you know, special needs. So, for example, uh, a, a question you might ask uh, a party is, would you require any special arrangements in order to participate or in order to attend uh, a session? So, for instance, if they tell you that, uh, uh, you know, if you ask if they require special arrangements and they say uh, they are perhaps not able to use the lift or uh, they need a ramp or something like that, then it makes you aware that uh, uh, perhaps this person has uh, some uh, kind of challenge, maybe a physical challenge, and you may need to consider if you're doing a uh, face-to-face mediation, you may need to consider a place that is uh, accessible uh, and convenient for, for the party. So things that we are actually going to be looking out for as mediators at the very onset before we go right into the depth of mediation. What are the things to think about? And I have seen uh, Lydia, you have your hand uh, raised and uh, and then after that I will come back to uh, Morenike. I saw your hand up as well. Uh, Lydia, kindly. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you so much, um, even for the organizers of this uh, conference. It's very enriching. Uh, good morning, all. Good morning, uh, Lydia. Yeah, uh, mine is, um, is a comment and a suggestion. Um, you, have, uh, you have talked about it, about the special needs. I think also I was thinking that um, Maybe even as we send um, the invitation, because we don't know the parties and um, one doesn't uh, you, you know that you limit the people who will come for mediation for your services. It's always good. I think it's also good that you, you as you send even the, 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 the quota next mediation form, maybe, uh, maybe whether we can have a, a slot on uh, do you, do you have any disability or do you need any, any, any arrangement for, for accommodation? For me as a, as a mediator to be able to accommodate you. Uh, and this will be able to help also to the, 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 the council of the other party or the parties to be able to communicate with their parties with their clients so that they can be able to tell us that they have special needs. And then mm -hmm. also it will also give us a chance to, to, to know that people with the, with the, with the disability, uh, they, they actually they are the most marginalized people and they, they at times, many at times they don't get justice. So it's also good to know that uh, so now that we, 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 are do, we are going the mediation way and we are saying that nobody should be left behind. Uh, it's also a way to know that uh, are people with a disability also using the, 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 the mediation uh, system, uh, this alternative uh, system, are, are they using? And if not so, what is not happening? Because, for instance, if only maybe the person has been dismissed uh, from employment because of their disability, and they don't know even where to go, then we are the ones to be able to try and see whether we can be able to reach them. Also, a lot of awareness creation in the community so that they can be able to know that there is that option. Mm. Okay. 
Thank you very much, uh, Lydia. Uh, Morenike, your hand was up. Okay, so thank you. What I just thought that one could ask would be a little bit of some family um, history about the family background and the economic um, stability, because you would find out that for abuse and um, special needs and even mental health, where that person does not have that stability, family stability or the economic stability, that would be a prompter. So questions like, where do you live? Who do you live with? Would be able to let one know, particularly what the cause of whether, especially where, where one sees that there is a, a, a mental, um, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a need, whether mentally, or physically, or whether there's a special need, where one senses that, because from my understanding, it's because we sense that then we then ask this question so that we can know whether we can actually support that kind of person and if mediation is going to help. So all of those kind of questions will, will then help to determine whether this person will be best suited to, or can even take a mediation session so that's my contribution. So yeah, understanding the background, the family and the economic background can help us, even with family violence, especially when you talk about children and um, the spouses. Uh, thank you. Uh, any other comments <coughs> or questions? So what, uh, what I have put down is, uh, you know, a question about uh, disability. Uh, do you have any disability or do you need any special arrangements in order to be able to participate? Uh, I've had a question of uh, concerns. So perhaps uh, do you have any concerns or fears that you would like uh, to be addressed? Uh, I've had a question of just, you know, understanding uh, who the parties are. So finding out uh, where do you live? Uh, who do you live with? Any more questions? Uh, uh, would we want to know uh, whether uh, the, the, the people are uh, on any kind of medication or would this be too intrusive? <laughs> Well, I don't think it will be too intrusive because don't forget that whatever you're doing is confidential. So if that is what will help, and once you've been able to establish that and that person has the capacity to understand that whatever it, whatever information divulged is confidential because in our work, the very first key, and that's why people are able to open up is because confidentiality is the basis for anything that we do. So perhaps a question about, uh, are you taking any uh, medication uh, regularly? So this uh, would refer to uh, perhaps uh, some kind of dependency or chronic illness or something of the sort. Uh, Especially where the issue of mental health is um, yeah. definitely. Yeah. And, and, and I think, yeah, <clears throat> something else that's tied to that is that uh, let's remember, for instance, if we are dealing with matters to do with family wealth, there's a very high chance we are dealing with elderly people. So how much time will you keep the person seated there and they probably need to go to the washroom every, every 30 minutes or every one hour? So I think also <clears throat> um, in, in, the, in the intake, the, the, the elements of the basic questions of, let's say, age, uh, for, for you as a mediator could trigger something. But yes, you can now ask, as you're saying, let's say like any medication. So, uh, but I think we need to find a way to ask it so that it's not so, you know, uh, because yeah, medicines we take, we keep them to ourselves. Uh, but we can always ask probably, uh, do you require a break uh, at, you know, or can you, can you sit through a session continuously for let's say like, yeah, for one hour or would you need a break? So yes, no, yeah. Maybe you could just say how long would you be able to sit for a session and then suggest one hour 
30 minutes so that that way you can understand so that it doesn't look like it's a personal question you depersonalize yeah. the question personalize yeah yeah, yeah. lydia yeah um i was thinking that about the medication it's also necessary because for instance if only the person is on medication and uh, maybe it's face to face and the person ends up maybe like uh, fainting and is uh, epileptic you as a mediator maybe you'll not get shocked you'll know that uh, maybe the person had not taken the medication so you'll know how to assist the person maybe you check in the back and the other thing that uh, maybe it's also necessary is that like uh, maybe the person is uh, having hearing impairment. You ask, you inquire whether the person has uh, a sign language interpreter and uh, maybe only the, 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 the session is going to take long. Uh, you make sure like uh, you either you have breaks or they have another, maybe two men, uh, sign language interpreters to be able to exchange because the one cannot be able to, 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 to sign for, for like uh, three hours. So maybe that one is something that we, is also necessary that uh, people can, um, can um, be able to, we can explore that area. Then the other thing is that uh, even for the people with the developmental disability, at times we, we assume things as a, as a, as a maybe professionals, and uh, we say maybe the person cannot be able to, to, to sit in the, in the session, uh, but it's maybe when uh, in, during the intake, we can have a, a pre-mediation session and the person will express her or himself that um, maybe I can be able to sit in, but I need somebody, I need my, let them decide who is supposed to sit with them, not that we are the ones that, or maybe can you come with your mother or your father? No, maybe that is the person who is uh, oppressing them. So let them, let's give them also a chance. Or we listen, we listen to them so that they can be able to, to also guide us. Because as a, as, a, as a mediator, this is the person who has come. So they are the ones to guide us because they are the ones who know best how they need to be handled. Yeah. Um, thank you, Lydia, um, for that. Uh, perhaps uh, something else that, uh, that comes up is how this is done. So I think it's, it's coming out quite clearly that this is something that needs to be done in the initial stage and preferably uh, independently of uh, when the parties are independent of one another. So, uh, you know, having the questions uh, uh, fielded to a particular party in the absence of the other party, uh, so that the answers are not uh, influencing uh, each other. And also for them to be able to open up uh, pretty well. Uh, I do not seem uh, to see uh, a question or comment that uh, perhaps relates to the area of, of addiction. And together with that, just uh, a, a query for us, where do we, uh, at what point do we as mediators draw the line so that uh, we are not uh, trying to determine what is outside of our scope to determine or identify? And uh, this is perhaps, you know, with relation to uh, uh, maybe addiction. I, I am not sure somebody would, uh, accept that uh, they are easily addicted to something. So how, and then how then do I, uh, as a mediator say, or conclude that, uh, you know, uh, Wangari who is one of the parties at the mediation is, is a drunkard or a drug addict. So how, how do we uh, go about that? And where do we draw the line uh, concerning what is it that we can actually, uh, be able to you know put down and what is it that we may need to refer to someone else uh, to be able to advise well i think um, as mediators our safety is paramount and so we must be very careful when we see a sign and um, i think lydia mentioned earlier that sometimes you you don't go into a session even if it is a pre-session alone 
she said something about needing a um, sign writer, whether the person has disability. The same way with someone who you think has um, a bit of mental health issues, because yes, we know there is a lot of stigma. Um, I, I want to believe it's the same thing in uh, Kenya. In Nigeria, there's a lot of stigma and people want to be in denial when they actually have um, mental health challenges. Even things like depression, uh, could sometimes get out of hands. And so what, what I would suggest, my opinion is that as mediators, once we sense, like you're talking to someone and you see the person is not coherent, the person seems not to be where we are reasonably giving proper answers. I think what you should do is to put a, put a stop to that and find uh, the, if it's an organization that has a provision because some uh, mediation organizations, organizations actually have um, social workers that they work with. Then, of course, you know, the social worker or the first aid, we call them first aid mental health worker in Nigeria, can first deal with that person and know whether he or she can even manage that person or you need to escalate because you don't want a situation where you put yourself at risk. Uh, uh, thank you, Morenike. Uh, so what I hear you saying is that uh, perhaps mediators uh, may need to consider uh, working in partnership with, uh, uh, as you call them, social workers or counselors or people who are uh, better qualified in being able to identify uh, and recognize uh, some of those signs that uh, we seek to, to find out. Uh, Bernard has uh, put in some questions uh, that address uh, uh, family violence. Uh, he proposes questions such as, uh, do you stay with your spouse? He asks, uh, how do you relate with your spouse? And uh, he also asks, uh, are they uh, violent? Uh, so perhaps, uh, yeah, th those could be things that uh, uh, may think about and, and also as as we are uh, on this uh, working on uh, you know developing the document if you would like to have your name on it uh, kindly in the chat uh, key in your full names and then we will be able to add that uh, into the document uh, yes Morinike well I would also suggest that in developing the questions we need to reframe so that we do not um, reframe and depersonalize so that it doesn't seem like we're being judgmental. You know, as mediators, that's very important for us because the way the, our communication is very important because what you also don't want to give the impression that you already prejudged the person. So even in our questioning, we, we need to reframe and be sure that we are not even escalating the disputes which we, people have come to us to try and resolve. Uh, thank you very much. So we are coming to towards the end. I can see uh, Wangari has her hand up. Yes, Wangari. Wangari, you have your hand up. Yes, and you're yes. muted. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you. I just wanted to pick from um, uh, Bernard Rotich's uh, comment. And uh, there's actually one, one uh, the, the, the question that he, he asked a very specific question. Um, is there any incidents of violence? I would think now in our in our context, uh, if it's a form, uh, we need to be able to now get the words the, the the words that talk to 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 somebody in their in their context. You know, the word addiction is a big word. The word violence is a big word. And where we come from, us we don't have violence. It's just hitting. It's, there's no violence at all. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's just, uh, so we, yeah, I think there's a need to be able to get now, you know, those words that now communicate, otherwise we will not be able to get the, to get, to get the, the, the feedback that we are looking for if we use very big words, but for us, yes, we know what um, we are talking about. Yeah, thanks for indicating, and I think that's also what, what's touching on the reframing and also uh, de uh, to depersonalize, uh, yes, so that someone can feel, and know it's just a standard, a standard document, yeah. So I think, uh, if, if, if I may, um, so Colleen, the, the, the invitation to this uh, particular session uh, was open, and um, we, the, the intention is that we can we 
we we develop tools we develop a tool that can be given to mediation centers we are considering that mediation service centers are where uh, people now go so that they can be able or uh, to make or make an inquiry for mediation services then a mediator is invited so we are now talking about that part for the intake bef um, before a mediation can start taking place what is that standard form that can be which can now be uh, used to tick through and see if there are other issues that are underlying and also at the same time to see if um, um, online mediation could work or not work with a particular case. Yeah. So Sarah, you can yeah, take us through uh, what's uh, the next part. And as, 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 as um, also um, have highlighted on the chat, uh, the intention is that then the, the persons on the call, we will we would add your names on, on the document. It will be an open an open document it can be available to any center to be able to use it um, uh, to use it freely and so the intention is that we now put this group as the creators of uh, do I, we call it what is it volume one or, or yeah the, the first one so please make sure you type in your name on the chat so that we get your names correctly yeah thank you um thank you very much uh Ladies and uh, gentlemen, uh, we appreciate your contribution. Uh, we have there's been. A comment, at, uh, uh, Sarah, sorry? there's a comment. Kindly, there's a comment from Sabina, an addition, probably to close. <laughs> and please remember to type in your, your names. Okay, so uh, Sabina uh, adds in the comment that it is important to consider the outward look, grooming, and facial expression of uh, the people if you do meet them uh, in person. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we have been at uh, the Strategy uh, 20 conference, uh, this particular session uh, running between 9 and 10 o'clock. Uh, we have been looking at uh, case evaluation protocol, uh, uh, trying to develop uh, screening tools and assessment guides uh, that uh, cover the areas of uh, special needs, addiction, family violence, mental health, as well as online mediation. Uh, this has been an uh, open discussion and we have had some very good uh, in, insights and input, uh, in, as well as engagement from the mediators uh, present. The next session is an action plan uh, for the coming year. This is another one hour session, which uh, will be running from 11 o'clock up till uh, 12 o'clock. Uh, so ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you very much. Uh, we close this uh, particular session by being able to recite in English the words of uh, the Kenyan national anthem. Oh God of all creation, Bless this, our land and nation. nation. Justice, Justice be our shield, shield and, and defender. defender. May we dwell May we in unity, peace, peace, and, and peace liberty. and liberty. Plenty be found Plenty within our, our borders. Okay, just a, a reminder, kindly make sure you type in your name on the chat so that we know that uh, you, we can have your name as part of the co-creators. Uh, I think the, the co-creation of this now is uh, sitting with uh, uh, moderator Sarah and also with uh, Morenike to be able to consolidate the, 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 two, the, two, the, two, the two sides that uh, we, we've looked at today on, on online and also on uh, online and also on uh, online mediation and also on the other aspects that relate to special needs, to, ad, uh, to addiction, to family violence, mental health, so that we can consolidate that and have a one-page document that we can make available to uh, mediation centers um, across Africa. So please make sure you put in your names as we should have them appear.